for your welcome. So the first one is layout. So layout, um, you're going to have a raised bed and you need a place to put it. Um, a good site is a site that gets you know, at least four, eight, four to eight hours of sunlight. And four is very minimal and only certain plants will grow in that amount of light. Um, you also want it to be somewhat protected from wind and it's not ideal to have put it in a soggy place that never drains well. Um, and then you're going to measure out for your beds how many beds you're going to have. Um, the book is really good about telling you, like, if you want to provide vegetables for one person, it's basically one square foot, one four by four foot bed per person, um, according to the book. Um, so you lay them out, usually they're squares, raised beds, four feet by four feet. Now for kids, and you'll see my daughter in here somewhere, um, for kids, it's a three by three foot space. Although I'm here, you can eat a lot, so maybe four by four for you. No, actually, that is mostly because that's your arm span. You know, usually you don't want a bed wider than four feet. You can make it as long as you want. Um, that's just the size he's decided to go by. So next is boxes, raised beds, and um, some of these pictures up here that have already gone through, like that one. It's more, more to show you like that you can build raised beds up. It doesn't have to be perfect lumber like this. It can be, you know, those are just pine branches that were in my yard. Um, we've also taken logs and split them down the middle with a chainsaw. And those make great beds, even though they're pine, they've lasted for eight, they're starting to rot at eight years. Um, which most people say they rot a lot faster, but ours has really um, lasted a long time. I do recommend, if you're going to build your beds and using regular lumber, to use these kind of screws. These have a star head, and you do need a special um, attachment for your drill. Um, but these, you'll find, you don't slip when you're drilling, especially if you're not super strong. For me, I, that's like the one I, I, those are the ones I like to use. Otherwise, it gets stripped out. So anyway, those are really good to use. Um, the kind of wood that is preferred for longevity is red fir or cedar. Red fir is less expensive, and that's what we, those are original beds that you see here. They don't look quite that bright anymore, but um, that was almost eight years ago, and they're still holding up just fine. Amy, is red fir different than dark fir? Do you know? I think so. Um, when you space your bed, you want aisles, and you want the aisles to be about three feet wide, and that's so that you can push a wheelbarrow through, you can squat to harvest, and just move around. So when you're laying out your, your square foot beds, that's what you want to think about. Now, once you have your square foot um, raised bed built, you'll want to mix it with soil. And this is called Mel's Mix. Um, this is it's kind of like potting soil that you're making yourself. And this is what I recommend for beginners. If you're not a beginner, I might suggest that you um, might already know what else to use. But this is just a really simple mix. So I put this, um, basically milk mix is a third of each compost. So you guys, I put them in that big bag so you could, um, if you like to touch soil like I do. You can stick your hands in there, not make too big of a mess. Uh, vermiculite. Vermiculite um, keeps moisture into the soil. And then usually he recommends uh, peat moss, but it's funny this time of year it's kind of hard to find peat moss, and I've been using uh, coconut core instead anyway um, for our potty mixes. It's sleeping lady for our seedlings. It holds a lot more moisture, um, and some say it's more environmentally friendly. Um, Is that ground up coconut? The husk. Oh. Yeah, the husk. Very, it's pretty finely. This, um, so do you use that even if peat moss were available? 
I think ideally I would mix the two. Just um, you can find that at Valley Feed, which is one of my favorite uh, organic gardening supply stores in the area. Very good as well. That's true, yeah. Indoor topics. Um, Valley Feed, I love Valley Feed. Bruce is really nice. He's the owner. He's usually there. It's really helpful. Yeah, it's the building with the horse on top. I don't think there's any other. Yeah. What if you already have your beds established with soil? And so you not have not great soil. Not the greatest soil. Okay. Because I'm not going to get your thoughts. Would, would you recommend digging it out, taking it all out, and starting? Well, it, it kind of depends. Um, I think I would use my intuition on that, and without seeing it or seeing what the, problem, mm -hmm. the problems are, I wouldn't be able to tell you for sure. But um, you might, before you dig it all out, I would suggest um, just admitting the soil. And compost, composted manure is really good. Um, you, can, you can even get, there's organic fertilizers that will provide the necessary um, macronutrients. Okay. I do not have slugs on your switch yard. <laughs> well, uh, I didn't. I did have leaf miner, but I don't think I did that first year. I really did not have a lot of insects. Because especially if you buy a bag to compost, it's like a very sterile mix. Um, I don't really like it being super sterile, but I guess there's benefits to that. I was, you know, I'll mention that as we're on that subject, that um, I have red worms in my yard everywhere. We have clay soil, like I mentioned, and I can find them anywhere I dig in my yard. Pretty much, I'm guaranteed to find red worms. Um, so they used to raise them under the kitchen sink. They ended up in the compost pile. And I don't know, they just kind of go everywhere, I guess. Um, but I was not finding them in the square foot beds. So that's the one thing um, I would encourage you to do, especially if you're not a beginner, is to add um, real compost, not bad, real manure that's aged properly. Um, mulch will also invite the worms and microbes. So that's just one of my thoughts that I didn't like about the bed. Any other questions? Is vermiculite similar to perlite? Yeah, so they're different rocks, I think. Is that oh, right? Okay. Oh, yeah. And then they're puffed, um, mm -hmm. basically. Um, perlite adds drainage, mm -hmm. and vermiculite holds moisture. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it kind of depends. I mean, for this mix, the vermiculite is the right mix. Um, especially if you're using peat moss, because peat moss can dry out. Um, it dries out a lot more than the floor. I think in his, this book, he also says um, you can add a like lime to this mix, and in the book it tells you exactly what you need for a raised bed and depending on what the depth is of the bed. Um, so he puts. Peat moss, vermiculite, sand, compost, lime, and organic fertilizers. So, so your boxes are <coughs> on the ground. Yeah, there's no bottoms on. Right, because you want to put it down. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Would you do a screen for the molds? Um, you could if you had. I didn't really. I don't really have too much at home because it's so <laughs> hard to play. <laughs> I guess I can't get that far, I don't know. You could. Um, one thing when you're putting the boxes down you want to think about, they always say, you know, you can put newspaper down or cardboard if you have like a grassy or weedy spot. But I think it's worth the extra effort before you build your bed to go ahead and get rid of grass. Go ahead and get rid of weeds because grass, mm -hmm. it, it'll creep up eventually and then it's a big mess. Um, and you could do a bottom on it, you just wouldn't be able to grow deeper rooted things. I've even had trouble like getting broccoli heads to really get big, and I think it's just because their roots just cannot grow up. Does putting the thick black plastic or um, clear plastic for uh, six to eight weeks, does that actually work? Yeah. As a weed mm -hmm. color? Yeah, it does. Okay. But certain grasses, you know, um, will be very difficult, even with that. Because mm -hmm. 
the roots are right next to that, and then they'll creep in. So yeah, so it's good. Um, it's really good if you can dig down six to twelve inches underneath where the bed's going to go, just to loosen up the soil. I like double digging um, in other methods of gardening, and so that's basically what you'd be doing, is just loosening the soil. Because the roots, the further down they can go, um, the better um, production you're going to get. So once we have the soil in place, um, and you want to fill it up pretty high, because as we know, when we water, it's going to go down and compress, so you might as well fill it up to the top. Then um, Mel really likes to use these grids. Um, this is a digital picture, but you can kind of see. Um, so we're dividing the, if it's a four by four foot bed, we're dividing it into 16 one foot, one square foot sections. It seems like that those um, pieces of lumber would take up a lot of the relatively small yeah. bed. I agree. Bed. That's why I, well, you know, really I just was lazy, but now I have an excuse of why I didn't do it. <laughs> um, I tend to just mark in the soil with my fingers. I feel like I have a pretty good, I, I can pretty much visually do it, yeah. Um, but, you know, square foot gardening and being a mathematician, you know, and some of us want to see things really just perfect squares and lines. So it's going to depend on your personality a lot. So the, the recommendation is to make it is with two, two by fours or something? They're, um, Probably one inch wide. Um, so, but that takes, you know, out of each square foot, you've got a foot on each, or I mean an inch off of each direction out of it. So, um, another, um, I think, better way if you do want to divide is just using string. You can just put nails and then wrap the string across. I have four square feet out of the box that um, has a wood. Oh, yeah. Nice. That was smart. So before I go on and when I'm making sense, do we have a, kind of a good idea of what square foot gardening is? Um, all right. So after you, if you choose to do the grid, um, and then remember the care, um, kind of a weird word. It's not my thing that I wrote up at. Care is don't walk on beds. So if you don't already know that, um, it's really helpful not to walk near your vegetable plants. It decreases the oxygen. Um, it basically kind of just smothers everything around them where the roots want to grow and stuff. Um, and with this method, you don't need to walk on the bed. So that's what that means. Next, you're going to select plants. And they could be vegetables, they could be fruits, like strawberries, um, flowers, herbs. It's nice to kind of mix it up. And then kind of decide what you want. And then you can take the white piece of paper, if you choose. These are just some examples of uh, what you could plant in a 4x4 four four square foot bed. And you can do this um, later if you want to, or anytime. Um, so if we look at this together, so here's the four by four. Do you guys see it? It's like looking down on the raised bed. Okay. So for larger plants like broccoli, cabbage, cauliflower, corn, eggplant, pepper, you could put one of those in each square. That would be the right spacing. Um, four plants per square foot. You could do chard, cucumber, lettuce, parsley. And you would do a uh, it's kind of a specific order. You just basically, so for four plants in a square foot, you do two and two. Kind of in the middle of these four. Nine plants per square foot, you can do bush beans or spinach. And this, you can't see all of it, but this represents what nine 